I love the way the First Gen Lounge makes me feel. Because it creates a space where I belong, where we're able to create community. The fact that it's a community. It's a safe place. It also gives me a place to understand different perspectives. The stories of these individuals prescribe transformational perspective. I receive encouragement, enlightenment, empowerment. And also serve as a catalyst to just keep going. Where we're able to be our true selves. I'm allowed to be an unapologetic first gen. And above all else, tell our story. And every episode is unique. I love it. I'm your host, Dr. Eve, and I'd like to welcome you to the First Gen Lounge. Hey, y'all. Hey. So I just want to take a moment to say thank you to each and every one of you around the world who tune into this show. I want to thank you for both embracing and affirming these First Gen stories. Thank you for sharing with your families, with your friends, with your colleagues, and even students. It's because of you that at the time of recording this show, we've surpassed 13.1 thousand downloads in short of over a year, and the podcast has reached at least 27 countries. Each and every one of you matter to me because you show through your actions that this podcast and all those who come on to it matter to you. So big, big, big thank you. I am actually going to start doing more to to give back, to show my appreciation. Uh, So this month, I am gifting three people with a personalized copy of my book, 1865. Uh, Essentially, the book is about navigating the early stages of adulthood. I share my story uh, being a first generation college student and just some of the hard lessons that I learned and, and the wisdom and the inspiration that I want to pass on to to you. Not limited to college students or grad students, you know, seasoned folks. I think you might be able to pick up a couple of lessons from it too. Um, so if you'd be interested in a chance to receive one of these books, I've left a link in the show notes for you to submit an entry. This will close on April the 21st, 2019 at 7 o'clock p.m. So yeah, for those of you um, who are interested or have a friend that's interested um, or be interested feel free to share so with those few things out of the way I want to go ahead and get into this week's show y'all know I like to sit and ponder and think and I found myself uh, in a space where I kept thinking about walking into new chapters of life so that's what today's show is is all about it's about walking into new chapters of life It's about to be the time of year, summertime, where it's about to be really busy. There's a lot of transition that's about to happen. And a lot of us are literally walking into new chapters of life. We have a lot of folks that are graduating from high school and undergrad and grad school. People that are getting new jobs and moving to new cities and adjusting to new places. It's about to be a lot of weddings. People are buying homes and having babies and not that they don't have, you know, babies or buy homes any other time of the year. But statistically, summer is one of the highest times for these things to happen. Got people that are vacationing and you have some people that are finally leaving what they feel like is a dead end job and taking an enormous leap into entrepreneurship. It is thinking about all of these things that made me feel compelled to share five things with all of you that I believe could help during these transitions in your life. Number one, don't freak out. After all of the excitement wears off and reality sets in from what this new journey you're on will bring, it's likely that you're going to have one of those, what in the hell did I just do moments? (laughs) You may like be suddenly overcome with these feelings of great anxiety about your life and what's about to come. And you're going to be wildly uncomfortable because you're out of your zone and adjusting a lot of times to something new can be a challenge. Um, I believe there'll be times when there'll be a tiny voice in your head that will try to convince you that maybe you made a bad decision. Like you'd be like, yeah, this was not smart. (laughs) Um, However, I want to reassure all of you that, you know, you're going to be fine. And the feelings that you have or going to have is normal because change be it that it's something good or that it's something bad, it shakes things up a bit. And in either case, it's pushing you to grow. Number two, keep yourself open to new possibilities. What I find is that more often than not, we tend to only want to see opportunities manifest in the way that we expect. And 
often because it doesn't show up the way that we thought it would, it can be easy to miss the opportunity. So you got to be careful. You want to keep yourself open to meeting new people wherever you may go. You never know how relationships can evolve and how you all can possibly help each other along the way. One of the most fascinating things to me has been being a college graduate and having met people from all over the country and where, you know, I've been able to go different places and almost know somebody everywhere I've gone, which has been like really dope to me. Um, Be that a college graduate, having lived in Mississippi, being in a sorority, all these things have led me to make connections with people that have continued to even shape my life. So keep yourself open to meeting new people. Um, And then, you know, for what it's worth, you might meet your soulmate. You might meet your soulmate because I definitely met mine at a game night. And, you know, that was probably one of the most random places I would have ever thought to meet somebody who I would later marry. (laughs) Um, Keep yourself open to professional growth. A career advancement may not allow you to stay in the place that you are now, may not allow you to be in the same city. But if it's really advancement that you're after and it's really the career, you got to weigh your odds. But you got to keep yourself open, you know, for that growth. Or let's just say a promotion may not be a promotion on paper. It may be that you've gotten a ton of responsibilities at work just thrown at you and it's your task to handle it. Show the people that you got this because what this opportunity may be doing is really preparing you for what is to come. Because trust me, in attempt to move up, it's not going to get easier. It is not going to get easier. Keep yourself open to change. One of the few things guaranteed in this life is that things will change. And while we may not always like the change that's happening, more often than not, the change is necessary. So embrace it and again, grow from it. Number three, don't forget to learn the lessons from everything. I have a belief that we don't only learn things when we've gone wrong in life, we can learn about life and ourselves when things are actually going right. Uh, If you pay attention, I think that life has this really cool way of giving you feedback. Like it's like this automatic feedback loop that's set up for everybody. For me, when things are happening and unfolding in ways that feel effortless and notice that I said they feel effortless, not that they're effortless, (laughs) but when things are feeling effortless and I'm left feeling positive and happy and excited about what's happening, I take that as my sign is this is good keep going. You got this. And when things seem to not be working out, no matter how good of a foot I put forward, I take it as a sign that maybe this isn't the path I should be on. And maybe I need to rethink a few things and head in a different direction. Now, this isn't to say that I am ever giving up. It is to say that sometimes you just have to switch gears literally like newsflash you're taking a detour uh what do we say about being able to get to your goals in life you know the destination isn't a straight and narrow like the same thing so pay attention gotta pay attention because most of the questions for what you're looking for answers you already have inside of you and in front of you if you are paying attention to what's happening in your life number four Ooh, sweet number four, put your pride aside and ask for help. I know this comes up in a lot of conversations that I have, especially with other first gens. It seems like asking for help can be one of the absolute hardest things to do, especially when you're used to getting it on your own. Like I remember being in college thinking to myself, I've gotten this far and I'm doing this, you know, like I've done this on my own. Like uh-uh, I actually put no help because if I do, that means that I can't do this, that there's something wrong with my ability to do something. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, no, no. Speaking from experience, you can only do so much by yourself. So hear me when I say that you can go so much further and do so much more if you simply ask for help. If you try not to do it all by yourself, there's power in that. I think that the scariest thing about asking for help, though, is that it calls you to be vulnerable. Yet, I have come to think that a part of your greatest personal empowerment comes from being able to be vulnerable. Now, the trick is that you don't have to go around asking any and everybody for help. I think that you should start by leaning on the people that you trust. Um, I had a really good friend, as a matter of fact, someone who's my, my sister. She is my roommate from college. We were talking a couple months ago and I was expressing like, oh, I don't want to be bothersome. I don't want to be bothersome. And she was like, listen to me. Everyone is going through something. 
So it's okay to let people you love be there for you. People you love and who love you back have enough love to give. And I found myself thinking, you know what? That's real. That's really real right there. On that note, thinking about having love to give, I'd actually been thinking a lot and and mentioning to a few of my close friends that something I noticed about millionaire entrepreneurs and that is none of them got to where they are or stay where they are by themselves everybody got a little help people built teams with those who shared their vision and pushed them forward so again i say ask for help especially those of y'all out there you know starting these businesses and these podcasts and having these events ask for help don't do it by yourself you're gonna weigh yourself out yes and number five live number five Always remember that you are doing the best that you can do with the hand you were dealt. At one point in time, I used to feel so sorry for myself about all that I did not have. Not having a father who was active and present in my life. One who didn't marry my mother and raise me in a air quotes good home. Not having gone to better institutions of higher learning, so I thought. (laughs) Not having higher ACT or GRE scores. Not having a high enough GPA. Not having more money to travel more or invest more. Not having joint more professional organizations to better advance my career. Not having done more research and publications. Not having gone to enough networking events. Not having a smaller body. Not having a big enough booty or long enough hair. Yes, all of these things going through my head, playing with my playing with my emotions and my self-confidence and my self-esteem, like convinced that all of these things were making me inadequate. Y'all hear me when I say comparison is a mother. Shut your mouth. OK, yet a shift in my mindset to acknowledge that I can only ever do the best that I can do. But what I have to do it with changed the game for me. I have been saying this a lot lately because it's something that I continue to remind myself of and it's something that I absolutely believe each and every one of you need to hold to your heart. Something that people have told me and I didn't want to believe it for a long time, but you are enough. You are enough. You are enough. You don't have to wait five years when you've obtained X, Y, and Z to be adequate. You don't have to wait till you're married, till you've got your degree, till you've got a six-figure paying job, till you're living in a pet house. You don't have to wait to be enough. You are already enough. In fact, you are more than enough right now. And even if you are in a storm, Hear me when I say that you are giving this life the best that you have to give. And that's all that you should ask of yourself. Don't wait for tomorrow or next week to think that a better circumstance is going to make you enough. You are enough right now, because if you were not what it is you have, you wouldn't be given. And sometimes we think that because things might be challenging and difficult for us, that that makes us any less or it makes us less. It makes us not enough. No, 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 no. The universe is giving you what it needs for you to have for where you're going to go. It's just preparing you. So again, I say to you, my loved ones, you are enough. So that's all I have for you this week. Y'all know I like to keep it short and to the point. And I want you to be good to yourself. I want you to be patient with yourself and with each other. I want you to trust this process of life because it is yours and yours alone. This journey is made for you. So embrace it. And until the next time, until the next time, my loves, keep pressing forward. I'm out.